They're heroes in the half shell. Here's your look at the new NECA toys. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, this is Leonardo versus the Shredder. After being accidentally exposed to radioactive ooze, four ordinary household pets are transformed into a band of wisecracking, pizza-loving, villain-dicing adolescent reptiles. Meet Leonardo, the super cool, sword-wielding leader, Raphael the jokester hurling manholes and one-liners in rapid succession, Donatello the brain behind the brawn, and Michelangelo the ice cream pizza gobbling party animal. Whether it's facing fierce enemies or saving humanity from near extinction, with the guidance of their sensei, these heroes in a half shell are always ready for straight out of the sewer action. Let's take the tape measure and first figure out how tall these figures stand. Of course, as you could probably guess it, Leonardo is going to be a lot taller, a lot smaller, I should say, than the Shredder. He actually stands 5.5 inches in height, which works out to be centimeters as being 14 centimeters tall. As I said, the Shredder will be a little bit taller, a fair bit taller, actually. Let's go ahead and figure out what exactly that is. And putting the tape measure right to the top of his head. Stopping the Ultra Megatron 5000 right there, the Shredder stands at 6.6 inches in height. More a standard size NECA figure. And that works out to be in centimeters as being 16.8 centimeters tall. Both the figures really come with a fair share of accessories. Why don't we start with Leonardo and then we'll beeline it over to Shredder, or would that be S line it over to Shredder? Anyways. Included with Leonardo, he comes with the compacted version of the Turtle Communicator. Now, before you get disappointed by this, I think the other Turtles all are going to come with various different interchangeable options. So really, even though Leonardo's comes retracted, uh, the other ones will have the opened up communicators. I think Donatello, one of those other Turtles, does have the opened up communicator. It does fit technically in his hand, though it does involve a little bit more of prying. I did notice though that the plastic that they use for these particular turtle hands are very, very dense plastic. It may even involve you heating it in, the, in a hot cup of boiling water and then uh, being able to pry those apart. The gamble, unfortunately, to that is, there's really, uh, if you bend the fingers too far out, then you're sacrificing what potentially could be done to hold the swords. So instead, what I actually end up doing with the smaller communicator is I try to tuck it, being that this is rubbery here, just tuck it into Leo's uh, little sash belt there. And it's just, again, it's a place where you can hold it I wouldn't really, really put it into the front because it, the way it's been sort of attached to the front of its shell, you don't want to peel that away. But it leaves you just a bit of a gap on the side where in theory, in theory, because it's all about in theories, uh, in theory you can take the uh, communicator and just kind of put it in there. It's a little bit harder than just kind of pull it, drop it from the bottom there. There we go. Uh, that's one place where you can actually store it. So I would probably suggest don't heat the hands. Whatever you do, don't heat the hands because then you won't be able to hold these. A pair of katanas equally linked to one another, equally hilted also to one another. Looks like the hilts are identical in a brown handle with these silver or dark gray caps and then the tops there. Uh, really nice looking, slightly exaggerated katana blades, but they look exactly like they did from the show. Now, as I had said, I wouldn't advise probably heating the hands to fit the communicator because as you can see, the katanas fit perfectly into Leo's hands with no fuss, no muss, and certainly no heating. I would advise again, I don't think you would really want to be heating those up. One of the other things that you can do, I uh, just love the look of, oh, my younger self just lets out a gleefully glee of excitement to see these. Uh, what you can also do too is you can take the katanas and uh, you can fit them into the back sheaths of his sword, of his shell I should say. There is a specific way that you want to put them in and when you are putting them in there is a bit of a snug fit. Take the other sword, the other katana, and just put them in. Like I said, it's very very tight. Might be actually easiest to put them in this way. There we go one side and then the other side. This one loop I've noticed, I don't know if there's a gap. I might actually have to just take, nah, I don't know if you can see it. There's just like a little, see a little lip of plastic that's sticking its way through. I can actually get the sword through. 
but there's something that's definitely fighting it along the way. I'm actually really reluctant to, to put it all the way in for fear that I'm going to break the plastic. I certainly do not want to be breaking the sword, but there's definitely something that's like lodged in the way of it. I'm fitting it in as far as I know the best suitable way. You can kind of see the way it's it's angled down, kind of giving you the indication as to which way you should be putting it, but I guess you could really put it in either way. Uh, it is very, very stubborn. And again, I might just, I might just kind of take a, a knife or so and see if I can just kind of wedge that open a little bit more. In theory though, I think it's just a QC issue with this specific one that I have. I don't think it's across the board. If you've managed to pick up any of these for yourself, let me know if you've got a same similar problem as mine. Again, it's just a, this one side's not so bad, but that that other piece, that other opening right there, just isn't open enough. It's just, it's not enough clearance from what I can see. I'm just probably, again, I'll take a knife or so, or maybe what I'll do is I'll try to heat that. No, I can't even really heat that up either because that's part of the shell. I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. Uh, the other thing that comes included with Leonardo, I'll just put him down here for a second, uh, is a pair of just flat hands. I guess you could, if you want to do high-fiving one another, I guess you could do that. Or if you had a proper display stand, which unfortunately this, this figure doesn't have, you could prop the hand up this way, and you could kind of have Leo doing like, like a cartwheel. But it would involve you taking a clip or something to hold the figure. I mean, he does have peg holes in the undersides of his feet, but I don't think it still would be enough. You know, it would only be enough to... Uh, see, you wouldn't be able to... It wouldn't be anything to really hold the figure upright unless you had like a clip that you could put around his arm and then you could do like the flat palm that way. I think ideally these hands are probably better suited for you know high-fiving, slapping off a high-five with his brothers. Uh, so those are, are his accessories. For the most part, pretty, uh, pretty expected. Those are like the things I would have hoped to come with Leonardo. I don't, not pizza or anything like that. Not gadgets that's going to be allocated for Donatello. Again, everything that I would want to get for him, I just kind of wish, unfortunately, the uh, the opening in the sheath was just a little bit more generous that I could get the katana blade all the way through. As for the Leonardo, again, my younger self just lets out a screaming girlish glee of delight being able to finally acquire these. Uh, the fact that NECA Toys would be able to eventually get something that was extracted from your head and put to plastic form is an incredible feat in itself we've already gotten ourselves of course the quarter scale and now the seven inch movie turtles still haven't had a chance to pick those up a very scarce things to, to find here in canada I had to try to score sor uh, source them out score them out on uh, online i just haven't had a chance to to find them just yet but the cartoon turtles definitely look i mean they look like they were pulled right from the cartoon one thing I love is the fact that they, they have shaded them. So like if you look at the front, it's sort of this military green that they've used for Leo. But then if you look on the interior of his shell, the under sections of his arms, like that right down there and the tricep, the forearm, you can see there's almost a darker forest green that they've used for kind of the outer areas that are shaded, even like the back of his head. Uh, and the bandana, for that matter, are also given a slightly darker treatment. This could be something that really could jeopardize the figure if it was too extreme. But NECA seems to, again, like they do with all of their kind of their NES game-inspired characters, they sell shade them in just the right areas where it's not too much. Even right, really from the distance, you would almost even think that it's the way the lighting is hitting it this way. That's creating this natural shadowing on the back of the figure and again it's just all paint so they've treaded it they kind of walked that fine line of being able to successfully capture a cartoon turtle give us the shading for like these pieces like this but haven't made it to the point where it's an eyesore like that would take a lot away from the figure and luckily it doesn't uh, proportionally he looks exactly like he does he does from the cartoon even like right down to his face i mean i, I guess you could have had extra heads to change out but I mean I'm pretty happy with this particular head sculpt for Leonardo uh, the colors are again a very accurate read to the original cartoon he's got the Leonardo on the front of his sash belt and the big large turtle shell on the back all of this is dense plastic all of it right down to the fingertips here the only thing that is a softer uh, material is the sash that's just on the front here 
uh, a few little lines and notations here. Some of the things that are carried over from the animation models, like even the little markings there on his forearm, anywhere there would be musculature. They kind of just put these these bold, yet subtle still, panel lining in all those little areas. Love that also that they panel line the shelf, both front and back. The more recessed areas of the shell are given a like darker brown area here. Again, I'm really, really happy with this release. Now, for his posability, he has a fair bit, actually. His head rotates all the way around via a ball joint. Sort of feels like when you are turning the head, there's a there's kind of a stopping point, but it's not to the point where you feel like if you continue on your way, you're going to break uh, any bit of the ball joint. It just feels like there's a little bit of a resistance stopping point to it, but you can still push the head all the way around. Um, no issues whatsoever there, other than just that kind of feeling like it's stopping there. Uh, the shoulders hinge out. You can rotate them all the way around. When you are rotating, of course, uh, they kind of rotate out just because the shell sticks further out from the front of the shell, uh, but they do rotate all the way around. He has a swivel in the bicep, single hinged elbow, and he also has rotation and hinge in the hands. Uh, no waist swivel necessarily. I mean, if you can see it, there is in theory a waist swivel underneath all that. The hard part though is when you are rotating the waist, because there is the shell in the way of things, it's hard to rotate the waist in the sense that you would actually be able to move the legs really past what the point is you're looking at right here. Uh, he has a hinge in the, uh, in the lower leg. Um, it doesn't seem like it does want to swivel, however, and uh, he has a more than a generous amount of articulation in the feet. Once again, the peg holes on the undersides there. So pretty happy with Leonardo, I have to admit. Leonardo, one of my personal favorite turtles. I don't know from the original cartoon, because it seems to kind of vary from show to show, which is my favorite turtle. On average, usually it's Leonardo or Donatello. Uh, Leonardo Doe came out fantastic. There's not really anything I would have done differently to the figure. Accessories are suitable and in appropriate amount of quantities. Really, at the end of the day, as long as I had the katana blades, the icing on the cake really is just the uh, the communicator. And uh, I probably don't ever really see myself using the hands, but the hands are there again if you want to use those. Now, Shredder. Shredder, oh boy. I'm... The idea that we're getting a cartoon accurate Shredder is something that has been decades in the making, at least in my personal opinion. For Shredder, he comes with a can of mutagen and uh, it's a blue canister with, again, that cell shading. You can see it on the one side there. And it really is only in that one strip that you get that dark blue. The rest of the canister is almost this lighter, almost aqua, uh, aqua blue uh, coloring. There's the opening of the canister as well. Kind of wish, unfortunately, he didn't come included with this, but if he had come included, say, with the mutagen gun, now we're talking. I think the mutagen gun is really only in the first and the second episode. It might have actually even been in a couple episodes after that. Uh, certainly for him to dine on turtle soup, I would have loved, again, a mutagen gun. But at least we get a can of mutagen. It's a starting point. And I hope, again, like this is a starting point for future releases. Uh, the Shredder also has a communicator with, as you can see right there, Shredder. Uh, there's a picture of Krang, a video screen of Krang there. Uh, this is something that is pulled directly from the cartoon. I remember this communicator vividly. Generally, it was Shredder down on Earth calling to Dimension X and asking for uh, Krang to afford him some extra troops. Krang usually reluctantly supplied him with a few foot soldiers in which the turtles dispensed with quite rather quickly. But uh, this is just a sticker, but I mean, it certainly gets exactly the point across. I wouldn't ask for anything else but this. Uh, some nice panel lining on the back side there. An exquisite side accessory piece. Now, he does also come with a larger sword. Uh, you know that this is Shredder's sword versus Leonardo's sword because the, the blade is a little bit more narrow. The hilt also has wrappings around it, and it's also decked out in gold, whereas Leo's is gray. And also, the indicator, the obvious indicator would be as well. One of these is not like the others. One of these is not quite the same. It's this one right here. And this one does fit into Shredder's hand, providing you do swap out the hands to the one that's the gripping hand. This just fits like so. Defaulted, though, when you get this guy out of packaging, it's actually this hand that is in the socket. Both the hands are closed fists. But to be all honest, I mean, for all the cool stuff that you'd want to do with Shredder, 
it seems very boring, in fact, to give him even a close fist to start off with. Anyways, he does come with that. Uh, if you do want to put the communicator into his hand as well, it's simply just a case of sliding that into place. There we go. And uh, he can again talk to talk to Krang. So there is that. Shredder also comes included. Now, really, everything else after this point is really just hands. Just nothing but hands and hands and nothing but the hands. Uh, Shredder does come with some pointing hands. Maybe pointing Bebop and Rocksteady to destroy those turtles. Oh, sorry, toidles, as Rocksteady would put it. Again, just a sort of directional hands. And you can see that there's the blades on, on both sides. There we go. And Shredder also comes included with a closed fist and an open hand to go with the corresponding mirror twin copy that's on the opposite sockets there right now. Out of packaging, closed fist. <sighs> Yawn. And then he's also got, again, the gripping hand, which again, if you want to just change out to the figure, just grab onto his forearm, wiggle, 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 and just pop that out. They're not the most forgiving pegs to remove, um, but at the very least, if you just keep try, try, and try your best, you eventually will get them out of the socket and you can change them out. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at Shredder. This is really, for me, I mean, I, it would be hard for me to say this is the price of admission because really, both the, tur both the Leonardo and Shredder are unique to themselves in the sense that we have not gotten these before. I know we have gotten really the Turtles in Time or like the Turtles Arcade versions of Leonardo, which sort of had like that slightly off coloring to him. I think it utilizes the exact same mold. Uh, Shredder though, I mean, to get cartoon accurate colors of, you know, again, the iconic look for Shredder is just fantastic. I can't begin to explain. I mean, everybody would probably be saying, tell us what you really think, but I can't believe I'm actually at the point of reviewing a cartoon accurate Shredder. This is something I've wanted since I was a, a wee, wee lad. That's what I would call myself when I was, apparently I lived in, uh, I don't know. But a really good looking Shredder. I mean, there's not really anything I would have done differently to this guy. Would he have had a removable helmet? Absolutely not. I would not even consider the idea of removing the helmet to, uh, of course, to showcase his uh, Rokosaki head underneath. I would not, I would not have it that way. I uh, love the look of Shredder. It looks, again, iconic to the way he does in the cartoon. Uh, the coloring is also that on par with what it was from the cartoon. Like, the cape is a is an actual fabric cape. Maybe, perhaps, one thing I would have done for Shredder... Um, I mean, again, for, for, like, to look at these, there's very little I would change to either one of these. But if I could be even a bit critical, uh, if they could find a, have found a way to glue the shoulders of the cape in place, just so that... You know, these weren't always moving around. I know you will probably want to drape them, but they don't look really great over top of his shoulder spikes. I mean, most people probably will be will be doing it this way. It just seems like the cape does bunch around itself. I mean, one of the workarounds to that is that you can bring these shoulders just out a bit, and you can kind of get the cape... It's not the easiest, but you can kind of get the cape just tucked underneath those spikes. But it doesn't sit the most natural flowing way. I think, again, if there was just a means to maybe just take a couple of dabs of glue and just kind of glue those in place just so the cape wasn't moving around a lot on you. Uh, hopefully, and this is uh, just a, this my own, for my own sake and wishes and stuff like that, I would love to see maybe uh, NECA Toys release a Playmates Shredder taking the same, the same mold and changing the color scheme given the, the purple helmet and the shirtless torso just as a, as a fan nod. Uh, I mean, I would love to, I think it was actually not purple, it was like a blue helmet, blue spikes, and then shirtless in the torso. Certainly something, if NECA is watching this, something to consider for SDCC. Shirtless Playmates version shredder with the blue helmet, blue spikes, shirtless torso, just as an, just an idea. The head sculpt is just fantastic. I just love it. Look, also that they've added a little bit of that cell shading there. It's a little bit more subtle on Shredder than it is on Leonardo. It's almost even harder to, to catch. But you can see that there's just that slight gradient of transitioned color. Darker on the back, slightly lighter on the front. You get a little bit more of that on the front mouth plate. 
doesn't get as much in the way well he does but again if you look at it it's so subtle for a second you're almost just thinking you're looking at shadow but there's that little darker bit of shade around the torso area here and he also gets that down in the skirt uh, again, the colors, there's nothing really I would have changed differently to the colors. The spikes on his hands, the gauntlets, I should say, on his shoulders and then also on his hands are all soft plastic. So it guarantees you one of two things. You're not going to be some idiot child that's going to be running around and going to poke themselves in the eye. And then we're going to have to do a recall on all of these things. But second to that is the fact that none of these are going to break on you. Being that they're not using dense, brittle plastic, soft plastic guarantees you the Shredder's going to look just as good years from now as he looks right now. Let's have a look at this guy's posability, and again, it's a fair bit. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down, and you can rock it back and forth. The shoulders hinge outward, and you can rotate them forward. You can rotate them back. You can swivel at the bicep. You can bend at the elbow he actually has a double hinge on the on the elbow if you can believe it don't believe me well it's right there it's right there double hinge on the elbow jack a uh, waist swivel uh, kind of has a little bit of an upper torso crunch it's i guess it would be a ball joint you can't really move the torso up and down too much but clearly like when you are rotating it, it does feel like there's a ball joint happening deep down inside there the legs split to a boat there. You can move them forward, you can move them back, you can swivel on the top cut of the thigh. Double hinge on the knee for shredder and for his feet. This is actually quite good. His feet uh, swivels, well first of all his leg swivels at the boot, right there, swivels. But uh, you can move the foot back and forth, ankle rock, and they've also given you a possibility in the toe. How about that? How about that Jack? Sorry I don't mean to keep calling you Jack. Overall I mean uh, What's there to say? I mean, I could I could theoretically have just started this review, said absolutely nothing, and just carried on for the next 10 minutes or so, just showing you the figures. I mean, I could literally just have this going like this, and you would see how great these figures are. Could be biased to the fact that I'm a big fan of the original Turtles cartoon, but NECA Toys has done a fantastic job of capturing exactly what these turtles should have been from day one, these turtle toys. Uh, and now, of course, we're getting it many decades later, which I guess is probably a good thing because collectors like myself are now at the age where we can really appreciate this. We may not have been able to appreciate them back then. NECA, I truly feel, has answered the call for collectors that have been asking for years for a toy company to be able to produce cartoon-accurate versions of the Turtles and Shredder. Now, again, NECA has started releasing these. These are Target exclusives. I believe they are Target exclusives, so the only way that you can find them is to go to retail stores. But unlike the movie Turtles, which unfortunately are very hard and few and far between to come by, these have, according to a lot of people that are posting these, these are pretty easy to come by, providing you have a local Target store that you can go and check out. Again, these are cartoon accurate renditions of both Shredder and Leonardo. There really isn't anything I would have done differently to this line other than just give them some more accessories. My only, only hope my only walk away hope from all of this after looking at how good these were handled I hope that NECA toys will continue to do more of these as of right now we've got of course the four packs each of the turtles are going to come with their corresponding characters so like Michelangelo and Raphael both come with a foot soldier I love the fact that we're going to be able to army build a foot soldier and Donatello is going to come with a crank other than that, what we do know is that NECA Toys have slated a Rocksteady and Bebop, and there is still the rumblings that we're going to be getting a Rock Soldier, the two different versions of the Rock Soldier, but I hope that's not it. I hope eventually down the road we are going to be getting ourselves a Splinter. You can see how excited I am. <laughs> I know, you can see, eh? I hope we do get ourselves a Splinter. I hope we do get ourselves an April O'Neil, and I really hope that we get a lot of the characters that have inhabited the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the original vintage cartoon line. Like I said, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, one good thing is they're not hard to come by. If you can find a local store in your area, I would say swing out now, see if you can pick these ones up. If you have picked up any of these, let me know down below in the comments section what you think of the figures so far. Are you as excited? I know, I'm sounding excited. Are you as excited for me? Are you excited as I am for the the idea that we're getting ourselves cartoon accurate turtles? Let me know down below. Always love having conversations with you guys. And make sure as well, if you are new to this channel and you haven't done so already, hit that little subscribe button down below. We are going to have a look. I'm sure you assumed I was probably going to have a look at them. We are going to have a look at the other three 
uh, two pack turtle sets. So stay tuned for those. Those will be coming up in the upcoming videos. And thanks for watching, guys, as you always do. I'll see you guys next time.